Um, I wanted to come here and share our homeschool car. I did post it on Instagram and I received questions on how my store and everything. So in this video, I'm going to share my homeschool car, what's currently on it, um, how I plan to change it, and how it's working for us. I wanted to include most of the things that we use all the time. And I wanted it to be in a space where everybody is able to get it and I'm, I'm able to roll it to room to room. Because we don't have a homeschool room specifically for homeschooling. So sometimes I do it in here which is like the living room dining room area sometimes i do it in their room and sometimes i do it in my room depending on what time of the day it is and also what the activity consists of so without further ado we're gonna get into the homeschool cart okay so first we're gonna start off with this um this came from the container store so basically i just have dry erase markers right here i have a dry erase um eraser oh i have some glue some glue sticks, pencils, and I think they threw like a regular marker in here too. So this is just to hang on here because say for instance, I wanted to pull out their dry erase board right here. Um, and I didn't want to look for anything. So I put that right there. I also have my main dry erase marker because I have a magnetic dry erase board that I use for both of them. So that's that. Um, I guess I can take this stuff off here. So this is something I just put in the middle um, it needs to go in a folder or something. But these are just some Velcro pages that I was telling you about. These are the vowels. Um, you have the continent, shapes, all of that jazz. Some stuff that I just printed off um, for some early morning activities. But I haven't cut them yet. So that. Also, I mentioned these dry erase, po dry erase pockets. So I can use this for the girls and just change out the pages as needed. And then I want to say that's it. So it's some stuff that I need to cut. I'm doing this. I'm, I'm also just um, getting things organized. So I have a pack of crayons on here. Because if they need to color or something. Um, I guess I can turn it around. So these are the tracing books. $3. So I have these. And I have two bins for the girls. So Eliana's has way more than hers because she's actually following a curriculum. And I cover more subjects with her. So right now in her, she has this first grade um, workbook that I absolutely love. She has geography workbook and she has... Um, four of the Tinker Active, English, a math, and a science. She also has this dry erase board. It's double-sided that I use for individual things when I'm teaching um, reading skills and blends and stuff like that. And the rest of it is just some paper. In Kazaya's, I have a few workbooks as well. I have the Bob book workbook we have some um dot art workbooks that you can do use your dot markers for we have the my first learning to write workbook we have the science thinker active we have um quite a few dry erase boards so i have this one which is regular double-sided i have this one which is the letters and then this is the days of the week and also the weather. Um, and then I have this one where you can trace your shapes and then on the back you can do whatever. So that's what's in Kazaya so far. And then I have just some um, CVC word practice that she can do. And then a few more uh, little basic workbooks. So that's pretty much all that's in her um, workbooks that we can rotate. Besides the main like theme of the week and stuff like that. So yeah. That's in the top. And most of these can be found in my curriculum video. And I'll link that where all the books and stuff is linked in the description box below. And then like in the middle. I usually put the main curriculum binder. So like this is the curriculum that I use for Kazaya just to give things of the week. And I showed this in the curriculum video as well. So I house it right here uh, just so it can fit. And that's pretty much it for the top. 
Also, I wanted to note that um, I'm sharing this because I know a lot of people want ideas. And even if you don't plan to homeschool your child, you can still incorporate a cart with their art supplies, a cart with like their favorite toys or their favorite puzzles, and just giving them a space to put things once they're done. And the beauty of it, you're able to roll it everywhere, anywhere. And so that's exactly why I love it. So we are going to the math manip manipulatives. And so right here, I have the base 10 blocks. And this is how I am storing it. So that's that. I have this, um, these cards that came with the math cube. And I am storing the math cubes in this right here. So, um, yeah. I have two sets of these, so that's why I'm using this big box. Otherwise, I would put the uh, flash cards in here as well. So, I'm going to put this back right here where it's supposed to go. And then on the side, I just stick the flash cards. Also, I have these fruit counters from um, EDX Education, I think, as well as these. So right here, I have some um, clock time activity cards that goes with this clock right here. I have some shapes, 10 grams, I don't know what they're called, y'all, but it goes with these cards right here. And, um, yeah, so this goes right here. These match early morning activity that's super easy for them to do. I have some, um, clothes pin that came from Target that I was bought. So this just has numbers. Also, it has, like, a plus sign, minus sign, things like that, division. And so I just use those if they want to make their own problems. Then I have some number flash cards. These came from Target. Basic. And then I have the flash cards too. So if they want to spell out a letter or something like that, then they can match. So that's that for that. And I usually just stick it. Right here. And then the flash card goes. And then the last thing I have on here is the um, place value chart. And so we work on place value while using the base 10 blocks or whatever the case may be. And so this is a good addition. Ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands place. We're not going past that right now. So I think it's suitable. And then that's all we have for math manipulative. So we do have other things that's not listed on here. Like our abacus. And, um, so now on the bottom, I told you I have my flashcards. So right here, I have these, um, magnets that we can use to either place on here to spell things or on our magnet board. I have the schematics flashcards, the animals and their babies. I have the letters, numbers, shapes, and colors. And I have letters and first 100 words so i have all of these schematics flashcards and i also have some basic sight word flashcards um as well as the united states map flashcards so we have a bigger puzzle puzzle for this but of course i just want to leave all of these things that we're going to use throughout homeschool as much as possible on this thing On the other side, I have some miscellaneous things. So I have this for drawing. And I have some dot markers. As well as some numbers, index cards, and some painter tape. So that's all 
they have some other notebooks and things that I wasn't able to fit on here. And also, um, we have like watercolors as well, but it's not in here right now because the girls took it out. So that's a closer look at what our home school cart looks like. So hopefully that helps you and give you an idea of how you can structure your homeschool card. Of course, you can have um, the double side card. You can have more than one card. But for me, I kind of wanted to condense it into one thing because the girls share a lot of the same activities and things like that. So I just wanted one thing that I could use um, every single day um, without changing it out so much. And of course, I'm going to do the bottom a little differently. Um, but as of right now, like all of our main things that we use is housed right here. Um, we do have our like construction paper, car stock, um, sticker paper, dot stickers and all those things housed in another like rolling cart. Um, but for the most part, this is the main thing that I have, the main thing that we use all the time. And when it comes to their separate learning binders and things like that, that's also in another another place. So if you want to see a video about that or where we store our other things, then just um, drop me a comment in the comments below we don't necessarily need a big homeschool room all we need is something consistent something like compact to where like if i need something really quick i know where it is and i can go get it and put it right back so the biggest thing for me was finding a space for everything to go because sometimes i leave things laying around the girls leave things laying around and i just need everything in one spot so once we're done with it we can put it back where it belongs and then we're suited for the next day so um yeah, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting more videos on homeschool, motherhood, and lifestyle things. So if you have any specific video requests, drop that in the comment section below. If or not, like this video, turn your notification bells on to be notified when I post more of these videos. Thank you for watching.